Time Audio Warriors and welcome back to another video. I will get my coffee in the sun, it's, it's just, <laughs> it's been so long. Um, I've taken like the last week off, I just haven't been down to the beach at all to go swimming because it was just raining every single morning, every single morning get up, rain. This day, there's a blue sky, I was like yes, amazing. Uh, and then I was gonna get some nice cool drone shots and it's gonna look awesome. And I got down there and it was like 50 mile an hour wind. So I guess it's like 50% it's like max morning. It's still pretty nice. So uh, weighing in this morning at just shy of 90 kilos, which is about 198 pounds, something like that. Uh, which is probably getting close to the heaviest I've been in a few years. And as I said, a few months ago now, this year, 2021, I'll kind of add a little bit of mass. So. Since I last weighed myself, I've gained pretty much two kilos. So about the last two months, two kilos. I think that's kind of acceptable. Right, before we get to this, uh, I just want to continue a little bit about the whole like mass gain thing, the fact that I said it was acceptable. Uh, and that's because, you know, like, yes, ultimately you can gain more than two kilos in a couple of months. You know, if you really want to go after the mass gain side of things, there's a couple of reasons and the, why I'm kind of keeping it a little bit more incremental. If I gain weight too quickly, things tend to go downhill very quickly as well when it comes to one arm handstand planche, um, just general body weight strength. Strength to weight ratio is important in this sport, more so than like if you're lifting weight and having more weight is useful. Especially being tall and on the heavier side anyway, I find that balancing that is, is useful, but ultimately I know that I will be stronger with more muscle mass. It's just finding that balance. Number two is a little bit about keeping lean whilst still gaining gap mass. I'm still not quite on board with the whole like winter mode, bear mode, full on bulk, gaining a lot of fat. Uh, I just don't think that gaining a lot of weight, cutting a lot of weight and having these big up and downs is the best way to go about it. I'd rather see like a kind of rough linear line going up, maintaining a lower body fat, but still trying to gain at the same time. Point number three is just that uh, enjoyment. Like I don't feel like stuffing my face with 5,000 calories a day. Surely some days, yes, there is times where <laughs> you just want to eat everything. But for the, for the most part, I'm, just not, I'm not about that. So keeping things in a little bit more of a balance, a little bit more moderate, I guess, is, is, is how I prefer to go. For this, it is the uh, Thai poached chicken. I think I mentioned it on one of the last vlogs as well. Old recipe, I made it like two weeks ago and I was like, oh my God, why have I not made this for so long? And uh, yeah, it's basically been every every single day <laughs> since. So if you want that recipe, I'll link to it down below. But it's, it's just, you got a lot of goodness in there in terms of like, you know, cooking the whole chicken, creating a broth, so collagen, glycine, all of those other good things that come with uh, creating a bone broth. Um, and it just tastes fantastic. It's a great winter meal. Calories for this are on the screen, and around 100 grams of protein-ish, uh, and probably about 1,200 calories. That's roughly what I go for for breakfast. App being used, by the way, is my fitness pal. People always ask about that one. Also, uh, to everyone out there who, obviously, I plug the app fairly often, but if you don't know, uh, releasing a new program as of today, which is the new Iron Strength program, which is basically a weighted calisthenics program with a weighted lower body program. So looking at developing the squat and deadlift, but also there is uh, some of those weighted flexibility things that we talked about in some of the past lower body sessions about using split squats and things like that to develop strength. strength and also flexibility. That's that program that's just dropped today. So if you wanna join the app and check that out, I'll link it down below. Speaking of training, it's time to do enough body session. And uh, let me talk to you a little bit about some of the things I've been implementing for that mass gain as part of it. We've got nature's pre-workout, as always, guys. Um, and I just wanted to quickly interject before we get into this, that if anyone says, who's this skinny British kid talking about masculine? I'm like, fair enough, you know, I'm not the most built, guys. Um, I train for, for 
for different things at the end of the day. I don't dedicate my whole training practice, which at the end of the day is what bodybuilders do, to building a physique. But um, there's no reason why you can't have that good physique, build some muscle, etc., as a nice side effect of working towards different, or in my opinion, more interesting goals. If you like bodybuilding, if you want to look good, not got a problem with that. Uh, it's all good fun. I've actually had some of my best salts today. What the hell is wrong Right, so uh, Herd Sands obviously are a massive factor when it comes to the mass gain side of things. They are useful for increasing a little bit of strength and hypertrophy around the traps and then like that's all dealt. But outside of that, isn't there's not going to be much for Herd But the strength stuff is, that's what we care about. So, um, I guess my current training method when it comes to trying to combine this like focus on skills and strength as well as achieving hypertrophy is not uncommon, yeah? Let's be honest, like you see this all the time. At the end of the day, powerlifters are usually pretty jacked. So, uh, you know, like Olympic lifters and all this sort of stuff. Essentially, my first lifts are strength focused. They're gonna be in the low rep range to focus on developing that maximal end of the spectrum. The second part of my training session is then following up similar patterns but focusing on more of a hypertrophy rep range but still obviously that strength element and then also focusing on weak points and then third is, is finishing up with some remedial exercises usually in the form of arms training because arms are smaller muscle groups you can train them a little bit more frequently a little more volume uh, again just for some probably to be honest with you more pure hypertrophy focus as in terms of what this would come under in a training method. You can call it many different things. I would say probably at the moment, the closest that it's to is, is the modified Hepburn method, which is a weightlifting method. Just search up on Google, plenty of examples. People like Westside Barbell, they use conjugate method, but the, the premise is similar. It's like max effort, heavy lifts, followed up with some higher rep, supportive accessory work. It's a, it's a nice way to combine the two in terms of looking good, but also still being able to back that up with good movement quality and being strong and being skillful, etc. Final set. On some uh, high rep stuff. Right, so I'm um, gonna finish up now with some arms. So this is a tip for all of my fellow lanky guys out there because actually one of the best like <laughs> comments I like to see is like, people say that I don't look lanky or I don't look tall. Um, and I think because I filled out a little bit, like certainly when I was a kid, I was super lanky. Um, and yeah, my, my tip to all people is you gotta train arms more. We've just got more <laughs> distance here like these are just longer when you're shorter um, and you're short levers muscles tend to look pretty good so if you're tall add in some more arm work build these out especially triceps triceps are usually quite underdeveloped in bodyweight training in general useful for you know filling in weak links for like hands and push up more tricep work um, and also improves elbow stability and stuff that's really that's another topic but yeah train arms especially triceps I'm a big fan of the floor press um, for the triceps, also a little bit of chest, which is another 
lagging part, but um, just add more of that with like flies and things. But so some of you may be thinking, okay, there's better ways to do triceps. You could do pushdowns. You could do other things. But as much as it's important to think about the muscles being trained, you also need to think about the angles uh, and the patterns that you're training those muscles in, and how that correlates over to other things. So let's think about the floor press. That's flip over is kind of like half a push-up. So I think we're going down to the bottom of a nice degree push-up. What angle is our hands going to be in? Where are we going to be using the triceps to get back up? So just something to think about if you're designing your own programs. The secret anabolic ingredient, honey. So the usual post-workout, got the shake with some honey in, a couple of scoops of whey protein, and I've also got banana and a lot of peanut butter for, for calories, and because it's so freaking tasty. Um, of course, post-workout, whey protein, all of it pretty unnecessary, but it's just very convenient to get in extra calories. And I, and I, and I do think there is some evidence to support like the use of sugar and protein post-training as being beneficial. Uh, but in the in the long term, the bigger picture sort of thing, outside of that immediate window, calories, consistent calories throughout the day, that's what matters. And there we have it, dinner. Super simple one. Uh, I actually went for some ducks there. Haven't had this for ages and I'm, I'm quite looking forward to it. Just a couple of duck breasts, 150 grams of rice, some veggies, and then I made a very, very super quick uh, sauce using soy sauce, some pureed ginger, and honey, which actually I do a lot with um, salmon. Like if I'm baking salmon, it goes really, really well. Uh, I think it'll be pretty reasonable with duck. We will see. So uh, total macros for this meal are roughly, roughly speaking, 115 grams of carbs, 52 grams of fat, 72 grams of protein. So yeah, pretty hefty meal. Um, I'm a big fan of just some fattier cuts of meat because it makes getting calories in so, so easy. Uh, actually a good day of eating today in terms of the mass gain focus, um, which is you know just about eating calories because ultimately that matters. A uh, total of 3,300 calories today, uh, 230 grams of protein, 244 carb, 154 fat. I think this is this is a good training day to be honest. Probably a little bit overkill on the protein front. Didn't quite realize how much there was in this morning's breakfast. I didn't really need to chuck the two eggs in, but soft poached eggs. Oh, that's so good. Certainly going a little bit more on the carbs. I think we talked about in past episodes. That's my way of moving from just maintaining to gaining. I'll chuck 100 grams of rice or equivalent carb in with my breakfast. Whereas usually I just wouldn't have any carbs for my breakfast. That's like, that's basically the difference between me gaining weight and, and maintaining weight. Super simple. By the way, a lot of the basis for this sort of diet in particular is from Stan Effering's Vertical Diet. If you want to chat more about that, I can certainly give you uh, a two cents there. I'd love to chat about that one, maybe in another day of eating episode, but let me know if you're interested in the comments down below. I'd also love just to chuck, if you have any other feedback, questions, requests for future videos, let me know. I'm open to ideas and I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Join the conversation. If you just enjoyed this video, you can hit the thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button if you want to join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. Don't miss out any more future videos, but that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and...